right youtube say hi to twitch twitch say hi to youtube you know what i'm saying say hi to your future self if you watch it on twitch right say hi to your future self on youtube wherever you are right okay here it is now this is a youtube uh, uh we're gonna do this one for youtube here round nine okay my hs open this is the final one of uh the last we streamed every single game so if you was there watching every game shout out to you if he was in the chat he was able to watch the live stream um while we had it every single game so my chest open round nine i just had that draw in the queen's gambit decline Bruh. i mean what do you expect to happen right but of course at the same time um you know i mixed it up a little bit and made my opponent huff and puff i got the pawn i sacked the queen but it wasn't enough in the getting like you know up a pawn go watch the game here in the final round i have white against this young indian player um Achi youth i'd rather hit there definitely said that wrong okay that's gonna be a uh, one for me but uh strong uh young strong indian player he's like 2k 2000 something. strong he like he probably like he might he probably 12 years old maybe like you know indian's very strong kid so i play d4 he goes knight f6 right he's the king's indian yeah he likes king's indian which is i mean i do too so after knight f6 right we go knight c3 he goes d5 and then we go bishop f4 we hit him with the jar jar banks london in the last round i was feeling jar jar banks a lot i was feeling joe baba ish so we put it on the board here we put it on the board bishop f4 on the board right we know the course is coming out as we finish in the edits on the back end for chessable also got youtube videos available and you know this is a deadly opening, right, in the hands of a very aggressive player. So let's see what happens. He goes g6, e3. It's especially effective against e6, g6 lines. But, of course, black has to know what they're doing up to, like, I mean, every move has to be accurate type thing. He goes bishop g7, and I hit him with what, chat? What's the move here? What is the move after bishop to g7? If you are a Jar Jar Binks London player, a.k.a. Jabawa London, white to move. What do you play in this position, chat? What do you play? This is Joe Bawa 101. He'd against this setup, at least. He said H4. Okay, Knight B5. From Young Dorian. I like it. Knight B5. I like it. Knight G2 from Foster Pet. Okay, nice development there. That is some development. Knight F3 from J Dot. The very classical. Develop your pieces. H4 from Chess Beast h4 all right here we go so in fact knight b5 is a move and it is recommended in some case in some places like a lot of people like knight b5 i think even hans course has to go knight b5 and he goes h3 in mine of course i'm giving you all a little bit of uh just a, just a little bit extra here h4 is what i do recommend because this is this score is the best so we go h4 i'm trying to mate him bro i'm trying to mate I'm trying to mate. Now, of course, you're going to get the course or watch some of the videos that we might have or even me watching playing this game where we're, we're going to sacrifice the exchange in many, many, many cases, right? H4. So H4, he goes H5, which is a very nice move to play. This is a nice response if you're playing this from the black side. Because um, sometimes I find myself in this position, depending on how I want to play against Jobaba. When people play it against me, I like to, you know, switch it up sometimes and I'll just play one setup um and that i know that it's, it's good against Jobaba, or at least it's, it gives me chances to say the least h5 is a good move even um peter spittler and Gollum jones in their chessable courses recommend h5 h5 i go knight to f3 knight f3 of course very easy i'm about to buy a hoodie go ahead isaiah yeah get you to zip up one let us know what color you get big dog yeah so knight f3 we also have Jobaba hoodies too though castles after the castles move this is all theory guys i'm playing almost instantly i'm playing almost instantly here almost instantly almost instantly and right now i'm giving you a file so congratulations you know what i mean like so i'm giving you a, a tidbit of what's actually available in the course and what can happen in jobaba london's and how quick things can happen in certain variations and i'm blitzing this out because i know what to do i know what to do so what do we do here? I uh, studied this line earlier today. Oh, that's crazy. Shout out to both his sisters. Andrea, what's up, girl? The homies. Isaiah is Bishop D3. Correct. Bishop D3 is a move. Nice. Nice. 
If it's 53, it's a move here. But the problem is, what do you think Black's going to play next, right? Think about what Black's going to play next. What is Black going to play next? Like two moves, two separate moves that may happen here. But what do you think Black's next move would be if you let them play another move right now? Sloppy Salmon says, KE5, meaning knight, but knight is within. But I know what you mean. Bishop G4 from Key with a Michael Vix would have followed. Bishop G4, correct. Very good, chat. So if Bishop G4 is going to be the move to pin you, it's a bishop outside the pawn chain type thing before you play e6, then you should play 95. 95, very strong move. And a lot of times, they don't understand that f3 and g4 is coming very, very fast. So if you're not careful, I'm just going to go f3 and g4 really quickly. But he actually played correctly, and he played c5. This is the most challenging way to play against this setup. Because I still need to figure out where to put my king. Also, the queen is trying to come out this way and, and do some damage, right? Right, so c5 happens. C5, I go queen d2. I'm still following book. I'm not even kidding. Like, it's a straight book. Queen d2, right? Queen d2. And then knight to c6. Knight c6 happens, right? Knight c6. Now, you have two moves here. And I remember, and I'm showing y'all some real files right now. This is why, you know, I, 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 I like rarely play it OTB. When I do, I love it. And like, I will play it some OTB, but not every single game. Because, like, I'm showing y'all some really nice files right now. Things can happen. It's white to move. What do you play here? What do you play here? Why is um, K knight in and not K? Because uh, you, that's how you differentiate, you know, between king and knight. Because king is K. So what would you put for king? D takes C5. Knight B5 are candidates in my opinion. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, this is too advanced. <laughs> I saw what you said, though. Look here. It's fun. So, I know you're good, bro. Guys, hey, thanks for the follow. So, thanks. See you, bro. My bad. No, you're good. You're good. Well, F3 is to keep the line out of F, F, uh, out of E4. J. Dot, you are correct. And keyed. 100%. It's F3. It's f3. You go f3 here. Stop the knight coming into e4. You also stop some f5 stuff. And this is a transposition in a way. Because actually, well, he played this. He played bishop f5. But in my files, what I give in the course actually, is c takes d4 because this pawn can be captured. At some point, I can actually capture this pawn. And after bishop f5, believe it or not, chat, I'm supposed to capture this pawn. After I went and, you know, analyzed this game afterwards and, you know, just finding nuances and finding things that I can improve on in this game and in this variation, I can take the pawn right now. Right now. Which is the best move. Just take the pawn. But what I chose here was actually I wanted to transpose into a line that looks like this, in fact. Actually, after F3. They can take on d4 and takes and takes and then bishop f5 and then bishop b5 and then rook, rook c8. After rook c8, this bishop takes c6, then I takes and then I can go g4, right? But I like to go knight a4 first because of knight c5. I'm showing y'all files. After knight d7, which is a really bad move, I actually take, maybe not that bad, but I put the knight on c5. That's got very good compensation. I mean, practically, this is a very nice setup. Queen takes, okay, knight c5, get in there, queen d8, bishop h6, g4, castle, queen side. I'm like trying to make as fast as possible. Very strong outpost. Exactly. Knight looks great on c5. Right? Knight looks really good. And I think the engine gave this move, which I think I put in the course here, which is 98. Then you go g4, which is ridiculous. This is wild. f6 happens. I mean, you're going to have to play somebody really strong. That, that it goes through this. This is what the line gives like. Takes, takes. And this is all in the course. Takes, takes. Takes. Rook takes f5. I give castles here. After castles, rook takes. I go queen h6. And then it's got practically something there like. I'm giving y'all files, chat. I'm giving y'all files right now. I'm giving y'all some files. But, you know, I knew all of this can happen. And that's what I was transposing into. So I'm literally blitzing everything out. So I play f3. He goes bishop f5. And I was like, I can take this. I haven't studied this, but I know I can take it. But I would rather transpose into something that I'm very familiar with. That I just showed you guys. So I go bishop to b5. 
Open, he takes on d4, right? And we go into that whole line that we just looked at. And I'm up all so much time because I'm blitzing everything out. Just blitzing everything out so fast. And also, psychology-wise, I'm making moves quickly and I'm getting up and I'm walking around. And I'm walking around, letting him think about it. And then, you know, he makes a move. I come back, I sit down, I look at the board, I move real quick, I do it again. So a lot of times, you know, Hikaru does that too as well. But psychology, a lot of times, kicks in like this guy's prepped a lot. When is he out of prep? I'm putting pressure on a position. And you can do that a lot with this opening in particular, because especially or any opening, but if, if you have it, you know the files, you can play stuff quickly. So he goes knight before, and this is something that I knew was not a move, but I was like, okay, it's not terrible. It's a good move. It actually hits C2. If I go rook C1, well, then where am I putting my king? Why would I castle this way with the pawn H4 now? So I go bishop A4, but you have to be careful of the bishop getting trapped. Of the bishop getting trapped over here with an A6, B5. Right? If A6 happens, I can actually play A3. I can also just take on C5 first, though, which is really nice. So I thought about, okay, what if he takes first? Reverse the move order, takes takes, then go A6. But here, this is not good either. I can go A3. Knight has to go somewhere, right? Knight c6, and then I, I can snatch the pawn. I can snatch the pawn. So, so I go bishop a4, he goes rook c8, which is a very logical move to play. I kick him away, a3, and if he goes back to c6, well, shoot, we got the same situation. Knight c6, I take, take, I go knight a4 with the inclusion of a3. Pawn takes, takes, and we get a position for, like, same thing. Knight goes to c5, yes, inclusion of a3, not really a big deal. Same thing, right? Same thing. So I have this A3 move, and I'm like, he could go knight A6, but it's going to be a long route getting back into the game. And he goes knight A6, right? He goes knight A6. I go bishop B5, and just said this is a question mark. Reason why I didn't like this is because C4. What do you think the engine recommends here, chat? <laughs> what do you think the engine recommends here? What is the engine move here? Right to move. He takes C steel. I'm gonna take the pawn. He takes C. What is the engine move? E4 on E4. Rook B1. Knight takes F7. Castle. Okay, so you guys are really thinking engine like, correct? The move here is castle queen size is move number two. Rick D1 is actually one of them. That's move number three. Castle is number four. 92 is number five. The first one is G4. Bruh. G4, dog. And I saw G4, but I didn't think it worked. Like, I don't know what to do. All right. So, okay. Let's, let's go to some lines. Obviously, H6, G5. You go H5 here, which I give this idea in the course, but it's a different type of position. In the course for, you know, ch for chessable, it's like, there are some lines where we actually play this G4 and then we follow it with H5. But here I was like, I just didn't feel like I didn't know what it was. I don't know how this works. And let's see. If knight takes H5, right? They say I can take on G4, which obviously forks. He can take on F4. But then I take on uh, F5 or even F4. Both are good. And the queen swings over to H2. I mean, what an attack. What an attack. This is like re really wicked stuff. And I was just not seeing that. I was like, I don't believe, I don't know. Like... If I'm wrong, I lose, right? So I, I need to, like, G4 was really strong. Here and after after the pawn takes, I can take on G4. If he takes this way with the pawn, what's the move here? Uh, let me see. Engine says castle queen side. Wow, I was not expecting that. But also bishop h6 and queen h2 is the least. It's like the third move on the engine. <laughs> the castle queen side just saying, and it says white's just better. Unbelievable. Like... But it's like aggressive chess, like 100% just go for the king, bro. Go for the king. That's pretty fire. That's pretty fire. But I just want my bishop b5 because my bishop's bad and I'm going to move the bishop around. So it's kind of crazy, bro. Um, yeah, no problem. You can ask me after this. Uh, freeze, freeze the h-file. Exactly. Just freeze up the h-file. And I should have played g4, but I wasn't that clear. I'm like, you know what? It, it, it does scream canty. The position screams canty. Yes. But it's round nine. I have a Joe Baba here. I feel like my positions are already pretty good. Um, so I just went with bishop b5. No e4. Now e4 would be really bad. In fact, e4 100 percent is uh it's just really bad. After c takes d4 first, right? It hits the knight. You could take on f5, but then you'd have to take on c3. This is this is pretty ugly here. Takes, takes. Um g4, it's not gonna work. Yeah, black's ready for this. 
Knight c5 is coming. It's just loose. It's very loose. It's very loose. My bishop on the other side of the board as well. It just does not work here. Yeah, e4 doesn't work, unfortunately. There are some cases where you can go e4 and then g4. Or g4, e4. Like, there's some stuff I give in the course like that, too. Very cool, but not, not in that situation. Yes, lose. So, bishop b5. C takes. He took on, d, on d4. I took on d4, and then he went knight c7. I expected all of this. Engine says his best move here is to go, like, queen b6. Like, queen b6, which is, like, wow. Not expecting that at all. Because it feels like the queen needs to be over here because I'm going to play g4 at some point. Human nature. So he goes knight c7, which I expected. I move the bishop back to trade off the last piece, really, just stopping the g4 push. We trade. He goes knight e6. I go bishop e3. He goes knight d7. And then what do you play here, chat? What are you supposed to play here? White to move. Sack on g6. He said, I don't care about nothing. Push Gary, the G pawn. Push Gary, the G pawn from Sloppy Salmon. Salmon. Push Gary, okay. Knight takes d5. Knight takes d5. Mr. Rio, what up, bro? Knight takes g6. We're playing for g4 now. Okay. So the problem with knight takes g6, right, is that you just don't, you need, when you sack, and this is a great, great, like, a lesson here. It's like, when you, when you take this, you don't have enough. Okay, you may get another pawn. Even with knight of six, I don't, I mean, like, this is just not me, bro. See, Engine says, this is like equalish. It's like, equalish. But, you know, just to sack a piece to be equalish. I don't have the light square piece. Like, it's just a light square bishop. We are we can play for g4. Um, but this is this is not it. This is not it's just it's just too much. But I mean it did work. It says equalish. But it's just not enough. Exactly. We just don't have enough attackers. Knight takes d5. The problem with this move is I can go queen a5 check. Which is really annoying. Right? Knight c3, knight takes c5. And he gets this nasty initiative where like now my king in the center. All his pieces are active and like this is not good. It's not good at all. This is not good. So D five is not enough. Yeah, black's happy. What if he went with the bishop sack? The uh, bishop h x h six after the sack? Yeah, it doesn't work. And here, um, you have to remember that this this is the, it's already defended. So you didn't even make a threat, right? You didn't even make a threat because it's defended. So I go here and I can attack you because this is not even made. The weird the weird knight defends e six or e six knight defends g seven. Very strange knight. All right, 92, knight of 4, 96. It's too slow. It's too slow. It's too slow. You have to be quick when you're attacking, right? Attacking one on one when I'm teaching this to students. You have to be quicker than that. You got to be very fast when you attack, very fast. Tempo, right? I had to work. I worked with a coach that said, work with the tempo. He's a fan of the tempo. And I remember that. He, I'm like, yeah, I am too. I'm a fan of the tempo because you can get stuff done. So I go bishop e3, no tempo. So he gets to make a move. He goes 97. Here's the move I make. The move I'm supposed to do, the sequence, knight takes and g4. Very simple. Very simple. I should have went for this. I should have went for this. But I went for this right here. I play f4. Bruh. And I get up and walk away too as well. And so I'm like, young fella. And walk away because like I was like, oh yeah, I don't know what to do here. You know what I'm saying? But it's a double question mark. A dub question mark. From the engine here because of we both missed this in fact we both mixed missed this 100 percent. we both missed this what did we miss what did we miss chat we both missed it it's two ways to do this certain thing but like he, we both missed this and i was like oh my goodness like when i looked at this with the engine i was like dang like what is this how do we just both miss this like it's a it's a very like nuanced thing. But we both missed it. Not taking 
Uh, Black Bishop, okay. What do you think? What do you think it is, chat? What do we miss here? It's black to move, bro. It's black to move. Queen a5, then rook sack. Pull on e4. Not even close. Not even close. And that's okay, because we're here to teach that to you here. It's all about e5. What he's supposed to do? His bishop takes e5. And give up the bishop. Which is not appealing. After I take either one, D or F, he goes, knight takes E5. Oh, man. What am I doing? So now I have to move the queen, really, because like if takes, then D4, and then he gets the piece back. I was thinking, oh, I have bishop H6, which actually loses. It's not good at all. Maybe not loses, but it's very bad. D takes C3. If I take here on F8... He takes on b2 and like he's getting all this material and for an exchange and this is not good this is not something you want to go down this line at all but i saw both of them but like i just didn't think it was that strong he took with the knight which i was like oh yeah this is fine i already saw this i have to take this way because d4 is still a threat so i have to take this and he takes with the bishop which i already saw this but it's, I don't have to take this now because there's no tempo. Remember, being a fan of the tempo, very important thing. There's no tempo. I just get out of the way. So I castle. I just castle, and I'm going for initiative. He goes bishop f4 trying to trade. I go bishop takes f4 because I'm about tempo, right? Tempo, speed. Bishop takes, queen f3 hits the knight. Boom. Now we go rook f1 because if I go g4, I can. I can go g4. But I have to watch out for him moving the knight away and him playing queen f4 check and like forking. Not forking, but like forcing a queen trade. So rook f1, there will never be a queen f4 check. Right, he goes knight e6, then I go g4. Time to push them boys. Open up shop. He finds a nice move, knight g7. Inaccuracy, but very human-like, practical. Because like he wants to take with the, with the knight. I take it, he takes with the knight. I go rook e1. Set up everything. I want to go rook e5 next. Rook takes d5 and maybe even sack. So initiative, I'm moving, I'm, I'm in the right direction. He goes queen b6, uh, sorry, queen g3, and then um, I take on d5. Knight f6 hits the queen, and here I thought for a long time. I spent like 15 minutes here because this is very critical. Where do you move the queen, guys? Very important. Very important. This is critical. Sack on f6. Keyed, if you lift up his rook and you take on f6, he's going to play queen takes e1 and give you that stare. Bruh. He needs some garbage. Into the camera. Into the camera. Into the camera. That's going to be gross. If you touch that rook. Oh, you saw. Okay, Keyed. H1. H1 hours, yeah, that's gonna be a net. That's gonna be a bad day in the office, my guy. That score sheet, huh? Yes, yeah, just sign it, sign it, sign the score sheet. Appreciate it. We ain't gotta talk about this. We ain't gotta talk about this. So, rook takes f6 is not a move. Queen h1, okay, that's nifty. That's nifty. I thought a long time about three moves here, and here they are. So, b3, I see someone in the chat, queen b3. Queen b7. Oh, I actually saw queen e5 too as well. Queen b7, I didn't like because rook c7. And the idea here is obviously just get, take all the pawns, but I didn't like rook c7. And then he can double, and it's going to take longer, it feels like. It's going to take longer. Because he's getting a little bit of counterplay. He defends the 7th rank. I got to move the queen. And it, it feels like it's going to take a lot longer here. He also has, you know, counterplay of his own kind of. Not a big fan. I don't want to give him counterplay when you're like winning or you're on the verge of winning. Like you don't want to give them a lot of counterplay. I thought about queen b3 with ideas of like trying to move the knight and go knight e7 here. But I mean, I don't have enough. Like there's a bunch of moves he can play. He can even take the pawn, I think, on h4. And it's just not that clear yet. I also wanted to keep like rook g1 alive so I can take on g6 with the pin. But this is just a hope. Like this is not that forcing. I need to force the issue in a way. So the move I play here was very Magnus-esque, was queen to g5. So if you trade, I'm automatically just so much better. After queen takes, pawn takes, like, you're going to have to go knight h7, because I'm going to put the rook on the 7th rank anyway. So if you go knight h7 here, 
and go rook takes c7 and the knight takes and then i take on b7 yes you got these two pawns but i don't think you queen in these anytime soon right and i got the knight i got the rook like this is hanging so i should this should be very nice for white engine agrees too as well it's almost plus two so it's nice it's nice so i went queen g5 he didn't like this at all which is very i mean like it makes sense because like you're just going to lose a lot of it's just going to be defending the rest of the game that's not fun ever you know what i mean you would rather try to be more ambitious so he goes queen to d6 but best move was queen g5 was taking the queen even and just giving white an advantage and trying to defend right so nobody wants to play that way so i hit him with the move h5 here go to coe chat here go the coe he takes with the knight where do you go next chat where do you go next we go h5 he takes with the knight as a jedi would because a jedi could fight to move where do you go where do you go main china with rook takes e7 rook h1 or rook g1 okay rook h1 e7 tasty he like take that boy rook g1 rook h1 okay rook to h1 let's put it over here let's put it over here rook h1 that's nice Jay. that's that's beautiful absolute trash 100 percent, 100 percent. rook g1 same thing garbage what are you doing with your life when he plays queen f4 check and now you gotta trade queens now you gotta trade queens you didn't did all of that you didn't did all of that now you gotta trade queens chat remember we played rook f1 a lot earlier so we never have to trade the queens so as soon as you move this little rook you better watch where you look big fella because you about to get hit with this left hook okay it's gonna be nice check and you're gonna have to trade them boys immediately so the move here is knight to d5 tempo stop stop this as well so that when he defends it now we can go rook h1 very nice chat very nice nice idea but you need to push further jedi push further jedi right so rook h1 he goes queen to g3 boom queen g3 queen g3 okay here we go chat here we go when you find a good move look for a better one i need you to put on your jedi goggles here find it find it find it where do you go in this position what did i play white to move what did i play right now made in china with rook takes h5 and then he said wait just kidding because he didn't want to get put on the screen Bruh. he didn't want to get put on the screen because you know it's made in one guys like i mean like rook takes h5 queen takes e1 what are you doing with your life my guy you know what i'm saying so he he helped out whoever else in the chat was thinking that that's not the move don't do that on national television queen takes h5 knight takes c7 okay queen takes h5 pawn takes there's a move and then rook g1 but you're not mating you're not mating unfortunately you're not mating unfortunately you're not mating a lot of times when you when you do lots of puzzles and you do lots of combos guys what happens is you see patterns deeper what i mean by that is like you're always calculating right and the move here is number one on the engine guys is queen h6 boy this is sick now my idea here is actually rook g1 and then take on h5 or even rook takes g6 in some cases now, what do you do you're frozen you're frozen he's frozen so he goes queen f2 stopping rook takes h5 very nice oh my goodness chat this was my favorite game uh, besides the the miss of e5 this was my favorite game i found this very sick move here now there's many ways to do it i guess for some reason i just wanted to do it this way here but where do you go chat where do you go rook takes e7 okay okay <laughs> this is what i trail trap this is such a sick move bro knight f4 okay so think about this i wanted to go rook g1 but i i was so annoyed by queen takes d4 and queen back to g7 and what i saw was that 
I'm gonna be up a piece, but like I guess you have pawns for it. I didn't want something like this to happen, like this. Queen takes and like, you know, rook takes h5, or even queen takes h5, and he go back here. And like this is gonna take a while. I mean, okay, yes, I'm winning. But the queen is actually defending. And it's quite annoying. So I wanted this to be something that I deal with. So I play bro c3, bro. Huh. I play pawn to c3. To stop everything. Nothing. You have nothing. And I played c3. Very nice. Very nice move. Very nice. C3. So now the queen cannot help with was a little quiet move. Exactly. He goes e6. He goes e6. And this is move number one on the engine. Once again, is what, chat? Very strong move here. This one is so nice. This was, this was, this and game number three were the best games of the tournament. Because of the combination that's about to happen. The most fun. Okay, maybe the game I lost in the Grunfeld, that was the most fun game I probably ever played. He underpromoted. It was three knights on the board. He had to sack his queen. I was about to mate him, but he had to sack his queen. It was the craziest game I've ever played. Knight of six. Okay. Knight of six. Okay. Rook f1. Okay. Okay. F1. So my seven says rookie two. So rook F1. What I didn't like about rook F1 is that he can do this. He can kind of take it and take, and then he reaches this position, right? So you reach this position where like, okay, I'm winning, but I mean, look at this, right? This is hard. This is like, you know, he can fight still. I didn't want this. You never want to give him this type of counterplay. So. If I go, what was the other moves in there? Um, knight of six, yeah, knight of six. I mean, what are you doing with your life after he takes it and then rook takes h5 and then queen g7? Let me hit the button. Moment of silence. Bruh. You can probably, I mean, almost resign. That's just how you feel. You should just, yes, it's not losing, but you should resign because of how you messed this up. So, you know, it just, it just hurts for very bad. So that doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. It doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, rook g1 is the same idea if rook g1 he can actually well he might be able to even just take this here and then rook takes you know rook takes h5 is hanging the rook so you have to take with the queen right but i'm not even mating yet might be a trade here something like this oh my goodness like look at this but look at this line like oh man sick rook takes h5 first rook takes h5 first runs into queen takes e1 and it's a perpetual i even saw this i was like what if i do rook h5 right now because it's a perpetual. Literally, there's a perpetual. If I block with the queen, then I lose everything. So then check, and he checks me everywhere on the light squares, believe it or not. Unbelievable, guys. This is crazy. Queen be fine. If I move the knight, he takes the queen, the rook over here. He takes the rook. In here, check. Even queen takes d5, maybe. But there's a perpetual. There's no way out of it. Unbelievable. I thought about rook takes h5. So when I saw all of these lines after he played e6, I played. Rookie two. That man is a Jedi. That's a real Jedi. That's a real Jedi. Rookie two. He played. I play rookie two here, deflecting all of that, deflecting everything, everything. So now the queen is attacked. I'm not gonna lose. So if you take the knight, I gather two extra rooks here. Look at the deflection here. Now there's no, there's no, you know, nothing on the back rank. This was best move on the engine, J Dot. Number one, rookie two. Very sick move. Very happy about this move. Very happy about it. Then after pawn takes, I take the queen. Right? And then, you know, if he moves the queen somewhere, then I have rook takes h5. I have knight f6 mates, all kind of stuff. Like if you move the queen, let's just say you could move the queen somewhere away. Even queen takes e2, hangs mate after knight f6, knight takes, and then queen h8 checkmate. Right? So you can't even take the rook. It's like a taboo rook here. So he finds a move, queen f3, and he actually looks up at me because he thought I blundered. Like, you know. Bruh. And it's really, I saw this already, but I know he looked up to me because I think he, you know, he, you know, he got a little bit relaxed, which is understandable because this move seems like I blundered. Like, look at this move. The queen hits everything. It's the rook. It hits the knight. It hits this rook. 
And okay, this worker can't take, but what do I do about these two pieces? What do I do about these two? He's about to take this with check, guys. With check. You better be very careful on how you do this, guys. You better be very careful. So what is the move? What is the move? What is the move? Yeah, he definitely looked up. But like, um, I mean, I would, I would too. Like, you know, if I feel like hey, I've had games like that, like, oh shoot, did he blunder? And then like, I'm out. I just, I'm still winning, or he's still winning. Take the night now. Rook takes h5. Rook takes h5. Play his chest. Thanks for the follow. There you go, chat. You're on it. Rook takes h5. I hit him. Before you split him. Rook h5. And we live. I mean, this move is so nice. Look at three pieces hanging right now. Like, three pieces hanging. But it's completely winning. It's crushing. Because knight of six in every area, right? Queen takes h5, knight of six mate. Right. Pawn takes. You can go knight of six. That's cool. But what do we say? When you find a good move, look for a better one. Rook g2 check. And then knight of six mate once again. Beautiful. Beautiful, right? What about queen takes d5? Queen h7 or h8 mate? Doesn't matter. Okay. What about queen takes e2? I mean, pick a mate. You know what I mean? Pick a mate. Pick one. So rook takes h5 is a brilliant move. Absolutely brilliant. He has one line that can try to win some material, which he goes for, which tells me this guy is underrated. He was like 2K strength or 2K rated, but he's a very, he's much stronger. He played queen f1. I go king b2. He sacks the queen because he gets this and he gets the knight. But I find the only move here, chat, which I calculated ahead of time. Come on, chat, see way you already know us. We calculated ahead of time and we play what move? We play what move here, chat? Framing in my living room. Hey, there you go. I'm in China. We play what move here, chat? What is the only move that we play? We play mate. Exactly crazy. Like, that's crazy. Wait a second. I can't do it. Hold on, bro. What's... Garbage. I can't even, like... All right, maybe this... It's probably a PGN file. It's probably a PGN thing. I think it's the... I think it messed up the PGN. I think it's messed up. Oh, I'm in check. Oh, shoot. I didn't even see that. I didn't even see that. Dang, that's crazy. Maybe I go rookie five, which is what I played in the game. Rookie five, rook e5 is what I played. I played rookie five, and that's it. Now, of course, the rest of it, he played on some more, but I was I'm already winning. I'm completely winning. This is a GG. This is a G. Now, fin I'll show you the rest in a minute, but like from the beginning again. You know, Joe Baba can definitely work, guys. It can definitely work. Definitely work. I play h4. He goes h5. Knight of 3. Castles, knight e5. c5. Queen b2. All right. Um, Calvary, thanks for the follow. Okay, there we go. Knight c6, f3. This should be 5. Follow in the course. Knight b4, I'm actually going to put in the course because this game. Like, I'm, like, this was never, this never came up. Because this is just not like a, it's not a good move, really. Because I can just defend it and kick you away. Like, just, it principally is just not that good. I can go bishop a4 and a3 and kick you away. So I never even considered it, of course. But now I am. So this is going to go in the course. But bishop a4 and then a3 and bishop b5. Right, I went this route. I'm supposed to uh, take on d7 next time and play g4 if I ever get this position. I went with f4, right? Is F3 better than the Queen t before Queen D2? I think it's fine. I think you can do either or. But it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then Castles takes Rook F1. This Rook was clutch because it stops any of these checks of trying to trade. Any of these checks. Queen G5, Knight D5. This is where it got silly. C3. Quiet move. Crazy move. Hitting before you split him. Always in order. And then Queen check. Hitting, splitting. Rook E5. And we win the game. The rest was easy here. After takes, takes. Queen g5, right. And then we just kind of you know, cleaned up. He played on, he played on. And then he resigns. A few more moves here. Yeah, pushed, and then he resigned. He says, a force checkmate sequence. Engine says, this is an inaccuracy. You have a force checkmate after queen d7. Probably, and let me turn the engine off. Many moves. 
Oh, you have a Force Mate in 10, bro. Bruh. Sorry, I didn't see the Mate in 10 engine. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't play Mate in 10. Like, I played C7. I right, keep resigned here. Okay. But that's the game. How do you gain more outposts? You can by gaining space or gaining space in your opponent's territory. So, there we go, chat. Yeah, this was uh, round nine. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you link a link the playlist for the Maya Chess Open. This was all the rounds. I think I finished with like five and a half, which is pretty nice. Plus score grain rating as well so um guys hit the uh hit the follow button if, on twitch and also on youtube subscribe as well i'll see you guys later on the next one perfect